Uh, yes, my name is Roger, spelled G R E G, and uh, <laughs> here to uh, today. First thing I um, want to ask everybody is, do you know what esports is? Okay, when you when you hear esports, most people think of video games. Think of kids in their bedrooms just playing games all night, not really getting ahead of anything, not really learning very much. And the reality of it is exactly the opposite of that. Esports is, we look at it as a way of a different kind of sport, a non-traditional. Esports helps kids in so many ways, and it helps adults as well. Uh, it helps you learn leadership. It helps in developing hand and eye coordination. It does a lot of the things that you think about it that we do and we get from sports itself. That ability to uh, gain friendships, to learn the be a bit better citizen of the world. Those are some of the things that you get from esports. So here we talk about what is esports. I mean, simply there it is a a form of uh, competition using video games. So you got Fortnite, you got um, uh, Call of Duty, uh, there's Madden. So it's anything from actual playing the sports or playing other types of games on there. Video games have generated about $158 billion globally. And there are over 200 colleges that offer scholarships for esports. 14 of them here in the state of Florida. Now, I own another company called Sports Thread. And what Sports Thread does, it works with youth athletes, helping them get to the next level. It's a free app for them. It allows them to be able to uh, post their plays, do a lot of social media, but also recruit at no cost to them to help them get college scholarships. A lot of, a lot of athletes do not, do not have a way of getting their, their message out. Sports Thread helps them do that. So when we looked at esports and getting involved in that, we wanted to do the same thing for these non-traditional youth athletes. So we do a lot of work with the high schools. And with the high schools, what we do with them is like, for instance, Seminole County will work with us because what we've done is we've, uh, we've, we will now be the provider for the Seminole County to come and do all of their esports. Schools do not have a budget for esports. They don't even have a budget for a lot of sports that they play, what we would call traditional sports. So we work very close with them to provide a very inexpensive way for them to come in. They come and practice uh, on the computers for five bucks a month, and then they, they pay like 10 bucks a month to be able to come in and do their competition. So it's not a revenue real generator for us, but it's a way for us to give back to that community and help it happen. If you look on here, there's audience growth is continuing to grow. More people are watching esports than are watching traditional sports. Look at this: 32% of the the users are between the ages of 16 and 24, while still 6% are between the ages of 55 and 64. So there's people in the older generations that are watching esports uh, as well on on TV, YouTube, streaming, and so forth. Audience could likely watch seven and a half billion hours just in the third quarter of 2020. So it is becoming a bigger and bigger sports for that. And how do we play into that? I mentioned a little bit about what we do for the high schools. We are an approved by the Seminole County and we are moving a location to uh, Orange Avenue in downtown Orlando, where we'll also be working with all of the schools in the Orange County area as well. So what we've done is we decided to get the top of the line best equipment out there. So we have, um, um, the virtual reality, as well as the PCs to be able to give the best experience for these kids, uh, as well as for adults and others as well that's playing uh, in this. We have the high, the high school league there. So we have our computers. Now, I don't know if any of you know much about the difference and what's important about having the PCs against the consoles and so forth. Um, it's all about the graphics card and the internet. So we have the fastest internet we could have, and we have RTX 3090 graphics cards into it. So they're, they are about the best you could get up until recently uh, that allows for that little bit of a millisecond difference in speed, which can make the difference in a lot of these games that these kids are playing. So it's putting everybody in a Ferrari on a, uh, on a racetrack instead of having a few in a Hyundai. That's the difference of what we're able to do for this. 
So we have two locations, right? We have one location right now in the Oviedo Mall. We have another one that's going into downtown Orlando. Uh, so what do we do with Hoovy and what's the importance and why am I kind of here? I want everyone to kind of understand that with eSports, it is another way for a couple of things. One, it's going to allow and help students be able to take themselves to that next level, whether it be high school or others. And they can do it through a number of ways. They can do it through our high school programs that we have there. They can do it through high school leagues that we set up. But there's another side to this as well, and that's team building. Because esports helps individuals become better at leadership, better at building as a team. It doesn't have to be for kids. It's played by a demographics anywhere from eight years old up to 65. So there are a lot of people out there who are playing esports at home, and we try to bring those people together in a form of, let's say, a, a business for a team building. So if you're an organization, you have five or six employees, or you have 500 employees, and you want to bring them together for a team building experience, one of the best ways to do that is through esports, whether it's through virtual reality, which we have three virtual reality arenas, or whether it's having them play a particular game where they learn to get better at it and they compete against others within their company or others uh, from other companies. But they're all able to come together, be at one location, have that communication skills and that leadership. I mentioned traditional athletes. So what is the difference between regular sports? What does it have and what does it not have? What is it not able to do for you? If you've got physical limitations, if you've got uh, um, uh, just, you're not, you're not seven foot tall or, you know, you don't run a 40 in, in a certain speed. You know, you may think I'm not able to do the traditional sports to really get to that next level. Well, eSports offers a way to do that. We had an individual that came in to our location yesterday. He was paraplegic in a wheelchair, moving in. He was asking some questions about it. Then he tells us he just moved down here to the area. is only a few minutes away from our location in Oviedo. And he is a professional eSports gamer. He makes millions of dollars playing esports, and he wanted to come into that because, and he does it because, and he has, he, you wouldn't see him playing any traditional sport, but he does very well on the esports uh, because he's able to play those video games and get himself ahead. So it does not limit you by your physical capacity. You can still come in and be very, very good at that and build around with that. So I wanted to introduce that to you. The way we keep our business going is through sponsorships, uh, whether it be someone who's got a name on a jersey like this or someone that wants to sponsor some other things that we have in there. So if any of you guys know anybody, any company that want to get their, get their name out, be a part and help the community, you know, definitely let me know. We can we can talk to you about that as well. Uh, but that's what we do. By the way, Hoobie is a Finnish word from Finland that means fun. And that's what we really want to be all about is having fun for everyone from five years old to 500. So if, uh, if you fall within those demographics, you should come and check us out at our Vito location and our soon to be downtown location. Uh, question, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's gotta be a question here. So, uh, I, I thought I got so quiet. I didn't mind one happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that my wife retired from AAA. AAA is a program in all their different divisions. They like to form teams, go gaming. I think that's a perfect example. Contact them and offer your services. And I think you'll end up with a lot of people doing it. They want some places where they can go for like an afternoon or a morning or whatever. Just play games, build teams. And that's exactly how the, the team building side of it works with that. We can do leagues where we can actually set it. We run everything. So they basically come in. Um, and the thing is, the it's we keep it, uh, again, affordable for everyone and expensive to come in, but a chance for everyone to be able to sit and play and enjoy it. And we do all the, the hard stuff for them. We'll set up all the brackets and everything for them. It's all done electronically. They'll be able to see it on a big screen and know exactly what they've done. So they work together whether they're competing against another company or either another team within the company, but it keeps, it can build that division. If you've got a HR division, more importantly, if it's a company that um, has mostly remote employees, the only time you see each other is on that Zoom call that you do every, every week or every month. Here's a chance to bring everybody back together 
have them come into the facility there and be able to compete against others for uh, typically about a 12 week period. So uh, as far as companies, do you guys have any other, any other kind of uh, uh, games? Because like Call of Duty, I understand that everybody's used to Call of Duty, but I'm not gonna kill my manager. I'm not gonna kill the owner. I'm not gonna kill the competition per se. Like, you know, so do you guys, foresee to have a different games for our corporations. And we have all of them. Call of Duty, I only mention that because everybody knows Call of Duty, you know, but there are over 40 different games that we have. Uh, Rocket League. Rocket League is very popular. In fact, the guy that came in is he is a he's a, a world champion in Rocket League. And Rocket League is a bunch of little cars playing soccer. It's interesting to see him play, but a lot of the schools play that and are, and are really good at that. So so Call of Duty is, is just an example that a lot of people know of. So, but they have all kinds of different games. We had a, a similar question from Trevor Gibbs, who was in Brazil. What types of games are considered for esports? Um, there is uh, there's about 40 different video games that can go, but there's video game developers, even just here in this town, that are developing new games all the time for that. So it's anything like, for instance, here right in front of us. Uh, it, it can be, it, it is pretty much esports, electronic sports. So as long as it's being played electronically, that's where it counts. Now, your your traditional uh, esports games, gaming that you're playing on the PC or the console, they haven't made it to the virtual reality world yet. So they're getting there, but there's virtual reality has its own games. So we have a virtual reality arena that has a laser tag that we can do competition and, and you can keep your scores, the leaderboards stay there, you can follow it as well. And if, you know, when you put those VR goggles on, you're in a totally different world uh, and it creates a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. And we use high-end HTC uh, Vive 3 so they have a higher uh, uh, resolution rate and uh, and all into it. So you don't get that VR sickness that you would with maybe an Oculus. You spend a lot of time on that, so. What is your top three competitor locally or internationally? Uh, the, uh, we don't really compete internationally. I mean, a lot of video games, uh, a lot of the companies do things online. We try to keep everything in. And the reason for that is that also online gaming is full of cheaters. I mean, you can literally go right now and chat GPT and have them write you up a book report that you want to, the students are using into it. You can do the same thing in gaming. So online, you create a lot of cheaters and all into it. So that's why we have our land center that allows for all everyone to come in. So now we've got 30 PCs here. We've got five stations of, I'm sorry, um, three, three islands of five on five where they're in, they're able to compete against each other. There's no outside that's coming into it. Uh, and there's no chance of uh, any cheating or anything that goes with that. Uh, locally, there's a there's a few companies that that kind of there's one in Tampa that does a pretty good job. There's one in Miami, um, but not really anyone that's really in the same game that we are locally. Uh, a lot of people think of us as an arcade. We're not, and there's nothing wrong with an arcade. But we are we're we're not a bunch of games where you go in and put a you know quarter in and play the game. It's more about the competition that comes along with that and that we're able to, to thrive and go with. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> uh, bravo to you. I mean, I really think that this is something that's uh, growing as a business sector. I've seen this across the world in some of my travels uh, where these become more and more popular, especially gaining traction in low-income communities where kids don't have the money to create their own setups at home. Correct. And very often in those kinds of situations, these things boom and even have waiting lists for people. You mentioned that your revenue model is around sponsorships. How else does it work? Is it membership based? Is it by the hour? Yeah. How, how does the yes. you all make money? So uh, so great question. So we do, you can um, and you can walk in and play the game for an hour for 10 bucks. You can play all day for $20. You can do a monthly membership, which goes for about $80. So the longer you're there, the, the better plans there are set for someone that wants to come in. Uh, we do our leagues. Our leagues are $25 a week to compete into it, but we give you a day pass, which is equivalent to $20 anyway. But you can come in any time and practice with that. Uh, so those are the, the, the areas we have. We do birthday parties. We've had huge success with birthday parties uh, to come in. We can do uh, corporate outings and parties as well. We put everything together for them and, and allow them to do it. And when we do those parties, we give them gaming and VR unlimited to play. Uh, and you can be surprised on some of these seven and eight year old kids who come in and just, they sit down, know exactly what to do, and they're going in and playing and going with that. So 
Uh, it's so we we do we know that our when it comes to the high school side of it, we're not really making a lot of revenue, so the sponsors kind of help. Uh, but as long as we're keeping the other things, the the, um, the leagues that we're doing and all the others, then it generates it's much more revenue. Becomes a model that makes a lot of sense. So you, you talked about parties and things like that, but there's also uh, in this town multiple opportunities for you to uh, to showcase. Uh, what you do uh, through much larger events like uh, the Orlando Science Center for years did uh, Otronicon, which was an annual thing. And we had uh, esports tournaments going on there. We had game development going on there. Um, and, you know, they, they, they were seeing 16, 17,000 people over four days. Uh, and then you've, you've got, um, uh, you mentioned some of the other esports groups in town and whatnot. You know, um, well, we can talk offline, but um, I can I can hook you up with one or two. The uh, but the thing, my point is, is that there's organizations that put on big event. Immerse would be a perfect event for you. Uh, you know, and because they have what 140,000 people come through that over over a week or whatever. So that would be an opportunity too. So I don't know if you looked at those things or. or... Yes, we have. Now we are, as we say, we're moving into downtown Orlando here. So we're going to be. If you, if you guys are familiar with the, with a lot of the things that are happening in downtown Orlando, and they're kind of, the mayor has an initiative to get away from the nightclubs. Uh, a lot of problems have come with that, and so they're trying to move. They're still going to have nightclubs, but they're trying to to bring in more of a family type orient. Uh, did entertainment and so forth with that. So the the owners of the the Beecham block, which is the Beecham Theater all the way to the corner bar there. So there's about five different bars there. So we're partnering with them. So we are in the process now of going through completely a renovation of that whole area. And it's going to become a, the Beecham will become pretty much mostly an event space for large esport games. We have the capacity for 3,000 people in there. Uh, and then we'll have the the other bars that will also have the, the gaming that, that anyone can come in uh, during the day if they want to. Schools will be coming in for that. And also it's going to help drive the initiative for that. The mayor even did an article not too long ago where he said that he believes that globally Orlando can be a major player in the esports world. And, uh, you know, we really believe that as well, just based off of connections that we've made recently with a lot of the developers and, and uh, game developers and all that are in this area that are really pushing for that. And we kind of want to play along with it. We do a lot with Full Sail. Full Sail is, uh, is sending a, a, a lot of business to us with that. They provide coaches and all for us. So it's really focused on making Orlando the, the mecca for esports. Dan? Just as a point of information, going along with the same thing we're talking about, most of you know that we're playing the biggest collector show ever in the convention center, the Orlando Convention Center, the week before Labor Day, not this year, but next year. Next year, right. We've got 700,000 square feet already rented, an option on the other 400,000. And what we've tasked Roger to do is come up with something we can do with the other 400,000 square feet. So he's got that option to do whatever he wants with it. I'm sure he'll come up with something really good. So that's the whole idea behind, yeah, can he do this on a big scale? He certainly can. And we've uh, and, and we look forward to more downtown than necessarily Oviedo. Oviedo, we're we're limited on the big events. Not that we're not limited with space. We're just limited in the fact that it's in a mall. So I mean, it's it limits you from what you can do. You can't have, um, you know, you can't provide the the alcohol and the other things that are important to that, which we'll have downtown to be able to offer for those, so that we have everything for the family, food and so forth. Uh, but we are still able to do some pretty pretty nice size. We've got an event happening. Uh, that's going to be at the at the end of this month, and then we're working with the group that that just came to us that was that were working out at Disney at uh, Wild World Sports, uh, and that venue fell through for some reason. So they're now pulling that, and it's a very large tournament that they're wanting to do with us, which will be a few hundred people over four days. It'll be coming back and forth just for the the com competition of it, and then the viewing and so forth. We also stream everything too. So we're able to, to get the streaming out through a network we own and also through Twitch and the, the others uh, as well so that we can put that out. One of the things Seminole County said to us was that was important because they want to have the kids in there doing their competition, but they want the parents to be able to log on and watch it if they if they want. And so, when, and the other thing we're doing school to help with that is that we're doing it on a 
pay-per-view so that the uh, the money that goes into that goes back to the uh, school as well to help them in developing their, their program even more so. Uh, have you talked to the Orlando Magic? Because they've had a several initiatives, you know, Ryan DeVos, I don't know if he's- We reached that. out, he's not really doing the right. esports anymore, right. like he was over that, but we we have talked and they're moving. We've also talked to about five other pro, uh, pro and pro-am teams that want to come and do, do uh, esports with us and develop their own teams along with that too. So it really branches out to so many different ideas and avenues that are, that are part of it. Uh -huh. I think the convention center would be a place where all these conventions, they got money, they team building and for them to be in conferences and have a time just to play and team build or whatever would be, I would think they got more money to spend than high school. But that may be outside of your realm. I don't know. So it could be, it could be something that we, they would expand and grow into. We don't want to get away from the, the high schools for us. We, it's, we, we kind of want to kind of, help give back. If we if we don't do it for the high schools, then mm -hmm. they're not going to have it. Right. I mean the, the schools themselves to one, if you're if you've got an esports team within your school and it's within your school, all you can do is compete against each other. You can't compete against another school online because there's too many you have all your firewalls. They just will not allow anything to come into that. So if Lake Mary, for instance, wants to compete against Oviedo High, they can't do it unless they have another venue to go to. So we provide that to be able to allow for them to do it. The other side of it is that they they just really don't have the the, the budgets right now to do to do that unless they have a, a donor that wanted to to kind of kick in for that. And that's just not really happening because again, what I'm trying to do here today is what we've got to get to this. And you know, you know this as well, get letting people understand the importance of where esports is going and how it's good for them to all be a part of it. Yeah. What's, what would limit or well, what limits you from uh, serving like the corporate community or the business community? Nothing. I mean, that's what we were talking about uh, that we just mentioned there with the, the leads and all that we do. So, you know, on the corporate side of it, you can come in as a as a corporate team uh, and you're competing in that and you're basically competing against another team for and, and whatever. And there's each day has its own separate games and so forth. So whatever games they play, they come in and they compete and over a period of time, there's cash prizes and there's money and things like that to go along with that. But we really focus a lot on the corporate world and then, you know, the high school world and then all the families between all. I was just wondering, you mentioned streaming on Twitch. Are you using you know, like Facebook gaming and YouTube as well? Because I know that for parents specifically, it be like easier for them to migrate when they're already on their native platforms. So and modern. We can we can do Facebook along with them. It's very easy for us to add any of those into it. But we also, um, again, with the schools have basically said they want to put that pay portal into in there so they can get that. So we have the ability to do that through our own, and we just you know, we send it out to the schools, and the schools send it out to their to the parents on what they want. So the school can have the ability to generate some uh, additional revenue to pay for some of the things they have with it. So what's your vision for this? I mean, what do, what do you see in five or ten years? What you know, explain that to us. Well, I think that, you know, I, I what I want to do is I want, you know, Hoovy to become a, a, a name with the esports. And I want us to be able to do what we're doing in Seminole County and Orange County, uh, do it in all regions throughout Florida, and then take this throughout the United States as well. We want, I want to be the place to bring esports in there and allow for the gaming world to be able to have a place to go where they can be safe, they can develop skills. Uh, Crooms Academy is an example that we work with that we've been been working with for the past few months and they come in, they come in one day and they practice and then they they do they compete against some of the other schools that we have now. We're taking that full speed in the in fall, but the Crooms Academy's esports teams, uh, they are their their the whole team is made up of those uh, those kids that are kind of on that spectrum. They are very, very introverted. They don't, they don't like to talk to anybody. They're, they're kind of kept to themselves, mm -hmm. but their coach brings them in and they sit down and they'll play, they play Valorant. So it's a shooting game, uh, but they, uh, it's a little bit of a different in how it does with the characters, but they, they will, this, this week, you will be the team leader. Next week, you're going to be the team leader. So they get these kids to become team leaders and everyone's listening to that one and they get a chance to lead that and go. And it really brings them out of the shell and it helps them develop them on a on a social way that they wouldn't have gotten any other way because 
of just the, the type of kids that they are. So it does, and it helps a lot with that. My question was sort of along that same way. You're in the perfect venue to market this, obviously, one million cups. You can reach all sorts of communities all over the United States and find people who actually get running for you, too. That's probably going to be your biggest. What are you going to overcome? Who's going to run it for me? Well, you got an audience like this, there's going to be somebody there that would like to do that. All right. So, final question is what can we as a community do for you? Just spread the word that um, of how positive esports and gaming can be for the, for young people, for adults, for anyone that uh, that wants to be there. Help us get our name out that so that Hoobie, which is fun, uh, is synonymous with that. And you know uh, that's that's important. Let's just let everybody know what we've got and have everyone come and have a good time. All right, great. Thank you. Second speaker, uh, we're going to do another, uh, what do we call it, flash feed introduction. You have two sentences, no semicolons, exactly. short sentences. What did you start your career doing? What are you doing now? So I started as a residence hall director at Illinois State University, and now I am a corporate ghost director. Uh, I started off as a <clears throat> graphic designer at a sports marketing company, and now I am a strategy design thinking facilitator. I started my professional career as head curator of a nature preserve and natural history museum, and now I'm CEO of a United Nations NGO doing environmental work around the world. My first business was political consulting, which I exited from. And then um, what I'm doing now is I'm a startup ecosystem builder working with startups to help improve their chances of success. Great. I started working as an employee for security test. So now I own a security company. Great. I started out as an architect and we built Epcot Center and to currently now I'm semi-retired, but not retired because I like to work and I do financial services. Really? Really? I with uh, multiple entrepreneur businesses and I'm still doing it. Four years old watching people's cars when it wins a really big. <laughs> what are you doing now? Oh, um, I'm the CEO of Ricky Media. I uh, I started out at uh, as an attractions uh, operator at Disney uh, from college, and uh, now I'm CEO of. You guys are around you, Miss Bells. I started out as a customer service desk with Crown Zellerbach, which was the second biggest paper company in the world at the time. And now I'm sort of a general CEO of three different companies. Uh, I started out as a DJ and a recording artist, and I'm the president CEO of uh, the Capital Fund and uh, Venture Services. I started as a volunteer teacher at a community college in my country, and now I'm, uh, I was teaching renewable energy, and now I'm building my own business in the same renewable energy. So as a matter of still doing so, <laughs> business doing it. Uh... I started as a flanker operator in the the board standing plan in Chicago Heights, and now I run a digital marketing agency. Also have a I start as a PA on Channel 2 down in Brazil, and uh, now I'm a brand new business consultant to the PG. <laughs> And uh, then I went to Mexico, married my wife, met an Olympic game 68, and uh, went to America, became a big time chef. Started as an industrial engineer at Ford Motor Company, designing engine plants. And today I'm doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
The credit is for the Circuit City Credit Card Bank. And today I'm a founder of a, a real estate development company. I'm Bob Wickham. My first job was 12 years old, handed a pitchfork to clean out a cow barn. <laughs> Today, I took a shower. My name's Jim Alabat. My first job, I started at 12, yard work, more lawn, shoveling snow, rank and feed. And today, I own a company that we help uh, protect business owners from themselves. My first job was thinking, but my first startup was uh, business. Trainer and accountability. What I'm doing now. My first job was a cashier at Crispers, and now I do one on the trainer. And hopefully, we'll have my own. I started as a programmer, and now I study philosophy. Hi, my name is Chris Rona. I started off as a visual effects artist for film and television, and now I'm creating virtual music. I uh, started as a electronics design engineer for Unisys. I'm in business. Go to school for a software development. Good morning, again. My name is Erica. Um, I started off my career as a reservationist at a hotel. Uh, yeah, my name is Marie Brinson, and I first year of college. I started off in the bank game days after the Pink Bay Book Mirrors. The Good morning, my name is Stephen Brown. I I'm Josh. Uh, I started off <laughs> as a cold marketer. I have basically in the communication side of the business. Their plan, their message. Thank you. Next week, we're going to hear from one of uh, Sean's mentees, uh, Raj Gautam Dutta from Silicon Assurance. We are still looking for a second speaker, so uh, talk to Josh. Uh, if you want to fast track your application, get it presented uh, and get in for next week, or at least. Uh, so we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you are on Zoom, download the chat by clicking the three dots at the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, if you want the chat from me here, email me at eric.deckers at gmail, E-R-I-K, and, uh, and I will send it to you. Join us on meetup.com. Connect with somebody. And Amita ducked out because she thought she'd skip out on the little <laughs> exercise. But Amita, what was your first job and what are you doing now? My first job was a breeder at Walt Disney World. Um, and what I do now, I am part of the 
to fund it and create that legacy. Oh well, yeah, Rupert has a quick announcement about Orlando Entrepreneur. So uh, thanks for mentioning you know, for the shout out for Orlando Entrepreneur. So Orlando Entrepreneur is an organization, uh, a new organization, uh, entrepreneurial service organization here in town, and we're here to help you all to uh, be more successful with your businesses by self educating, by helping you with your mindset and uh, by helping you plan sufficiently. And so what we do, we're set, we start with uh, networking events. So we have a, a monthly networking event uh, that we call it the Startup Happy Hour. And we've had four of them so far. And we're averaging over 100 people at a time. And this next one is Monday. It's the third Monday of every month. And so the next one is at the National Entrepreneur Center next Monday. They have 15 organizations in there whose doors are open wide and offer free services to all entrepreneurs to help you with your businesses. And so we're gonna be having the event there and the first drink, and depending on how many sponsors we get this week, maybe two drinks uh, will be on us. Um, and Can you tell us where we're looking? It's at the National Entrepreneur <laughs> Center. Across the street. Right across the street. <laughs> okay. Yeah, over that way. <laughs> yeah, in fast Square Mall. Yeah. The time is five, from 5.30 to 8. If you go to meetup.com and you look up Orlando Prenor, it's one word, uh, then you'll be able to join our group. We have 630 members in our group right now, and it's growing every day. And uh, we would love to see you there. And you will, who's, who's been there so far? Okay, y'all know y'all know what it's like. Uh, it's, it's an awesome opportunity to meet and create other opportunities. So we we'll hope to see y'all there. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we will see you next week. <clears throat> next week is our last week in the <clears throat> building. Two weeks. Do not come here. Go to Rollins. Next week, still come here. So uh, if you have been here for four, eight. For 12 weeks in a row, come up and see me. I've got some gifts for you. Otherwise, we will see you all next week.